George Stevens Jr. wrote and directed Sydney's most recent film, Separate But Equal. He is the founder and current co-chairman of the American Film Institute. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. George Stevens Jr. Twenty years ago, the pioneer American director John Ford, near the end of his life, rose from a wheelchair and strode to this place to accept the first Life Achievement Award. The criteria called for a recipient who in a fundamental way had advanced the art of film and whose work had stood the test of time. Tonight, we extend the tradition begun in 1973 to honor a different sort of pioneer. The first motion picture to portray a black character was made at the dawn of the medium in 1903 by Edwin S. Porter. It was 12 minutes long. It was called Uncle Tom's Cabin. In it, a slightly overweight white actor blackened his face to play Harriet Beecher Stowe's legendary slave. The world would have to wait nearly half a century before a black man would have the opportunity to come on screen to display proudly, as a leading man, the color of his skin. The man, with his dignity, strength, and a quiet sense of outrage, would crack the barrier that had stood impenetrable for nearly five decades. That man is Sidney Poitier. He vowed then to be selective in accepting roles, to make motion pictures about what he called the dignity, nobility, the magnificence of human life. No one then could have foretold his success, except perhaps his mother, who, when her son was born, weighing but three pounds, and a coffin had been prepared for him, went to a soothsayer in search of hope. The soothsayer told her not to worry. Her son would survive and travel to the corners of the earth and walk with kings. He did that and more. He became one of the finest actors of our time, and he touched the conscience of millions of moviegoers across the earth. And he met his own standard. He made films about dignity, nobility, and the magnificence of human life that have stood the test of time. Sidney Poitier. I fully expected to be wise by now. I missed. I have come to this place in my life armed only with the knowledge of how little I know. I never expected that. For much of my youth, I looked, but I couldn't see. Now I have arrived at a point where I can sometimes see without looking. I never expected that. As a young man, when I first got to know the world and where I was situated in it, I developed a strong belief that the time would change. Now it is clear that I am changed by time. I never expected that. I have carried a cherished secret in my bosom for now some 30 years or more. 
the deeply held conviction that I can sing songs as well and tell stories as funnily as Harry Belafonte and Bill Cosby. <laughs> and now I find that I cannot. And I gotta tell you, I never expected that. The hands of many human beings are pressed into the molding of a life, and I must share tonight with them and them with you. The first and foremost of them, her name is Evelyn. Evelyn Outen Poitier, my mother. She, most of all, is the reason I am here tonight, and for her, most of all, I am proud to be here tonight. Her husband, Reginald James Poitier, my dad, a good, solid, loving fellow who stood tall through times that would rattle a fortress. My sister, Verdon Poitier Williams, fearless and curious. My friends, Harry Johnson, Yorick Roll, and Joe Palashi, who lived fast and died young and left me with childhood memories that have helped to light my way. An elderly Jewish waiter who took time to help a young black dishwasher to learn how to read. Night after night, week after week, he persevered with patience. I cannot tell you his name. I never knew it, but I read pretty good now. <laughs> Inspiration kept my tank full over long, lonely years, and no better time than now to thank some of those whose lives supplied me with all I needed. Thank you, Alice Childress, Canada Lee, Paul Robeson, Martin Luther King Jr., Thurgood Marshall, Jackie Robinson, Ruby D., Lorraine Hansberry, and last but not least, that old, decrepit folk singer, what's his name, Belafonte. <laughs> to my love, my wife, my life force, my inspiration, my Joanna. The most loving, caring person I have ever known. All my love, always, for 24 years of happiness. To my six children, three of whom have jobs. <laughs> which ain't no bad percentage in these uncertain times. <laughs> to, to them, my love and thanks to. To my grandchildren, 15 and 17, whom I certainly expect to be working full-time any day now. <laughs> my thanks also goes to that community of filmmakers who made room for me to be and room for me to grow. Much of this evening is due to you, Stanley Kramer. May God bless your maverick soul. And you, Walter Marish, and you, Joe Mankiewicz, and you, Richard Brooks, to the young African-American filmmakers who have arrived on the playing field, I am filled with pride that you are here. I am sure you have, like me, discovered it was never impossible. It was just harder. It is gratifying to see, and may the world take note, that you didn't let harder stop you. 
welcome young bloods. Those of us who go before you glance back with satisfaction and leave you with a simple trust. Be true to yourselves and be useful to the journey. Now, I'd better take Harry home. <clears throat> All this excitement is too risky for a man of his age. <laughs> it was for me an evening that I shall always remember. You have given me reasons to reach farther than I've ever reached in my life. This certainly puts new goals far outside the points of my fingers. Thank you.